Uh, so I'm going to be talking about the Enigma cipher machine because I've got an Enigma cipher machine. And uh, the reason, I suppose, uh, why I'm talking about it now is that we're just a few days away from 2012, which is Alan Turing's centenary, the centenary of his birth. So it's an opportunity to remind people about the most notorious encryption device in history and the extraordinary efforts of a guy who, who cracked that code and who changed the course of the war. And um, next year is going to be a great opportunity to remember Alan Turing and to remember all the other people that, that broke the German Enigma code and um, we'll kick things off tonight. Well I wrote a book called The Code Book which is a history of code breaking and, and so people knew that I was interested in this area and that, that I was kind of putting out feelers for, for where I might be able to get hold of an, an Enigma machine and uh, I got to know a chap called David Kahn who'd written the definitive history of cryptography called The Code Breakers and David Kahn had, um, had, had met a chap called Bradford Hardy who had done his German translations for him and Bradford Hardy had captured this German Enigma machine in the Second World War and smuggled it all the way back to America and uh, when Bradford passed away um, his family were looking for a new home um, they got in touch with David, David got in touch with me and it's, it's here now I mean, the biggest side of the year has to be um, the tentative discovery of, of the Higgs particle um, and it's particularly as I'm a physicist I, I, I was a particle physicist and I worked at CERN and we, we were looking for Higgs uh, on, on the experiment that I was on back in the 19, 1980s um, and it was posited back in the 1960s so it's been almost half a century that physicists have been looking for this particle and at last it really seems to be here and I think one of the things that, that, that's come out well, and Brian Cox has emphasised this, is that it's a nice illustration of how science works. You know, we're not saying it exists. Um, the physicists on two independent experiments are saying we have got some interesting evidence. And when you put both experiments together, it becomes even more interesting. And um, I think the, the machine is closed down for winter. When, when I was at CERN, we used to close down the machine because the electricity bills were so high and I guess the people of Geneva wanted to keep warm. Ladies and gentlemen, the house is now open. Please do not cross the stage. Thank you. Just a few minutes to go. It's very exciting, isn't yeah. it? Um, so, so, yeah, so the machine is closed down for winter. Um, it'll start again in a, in a, I think, probably March. Um, and then maybe with three months more data, uh, we'll, we'll have something more definitive. But it's an extraordinary discovery. Um, Well, I, I tried to design my own experiment this year. Um, I um, became concerned about um, some of the claims made by Psychic Sally, uh, Sally Morgan. And there'd been some, uh, some accusations made by audience members in Dublin that she had an earpiece and she was being fed information. And of course, Sally vehemently denies all of this. And, um, and I kind of thought, well, you know, it's hard to tell who's right and who's wrong. You know, the, the, I've, I've, I've I've communicated with the women who, who made the accusations and they seem very genuine and honest and decent people. Um, I've tried to communicate with Sally and her lawyers have been rather difficult to, to correspond with, but you know, she equally defends herself. So it's hard to know who's right and who's wrong. So the idea that I developed with the Professor Chris French at Goldsmith College and the Merseyside Skeptics was to develop an experiment to test Sally. Regardless of the accusations, can she deliver the goods? Can she get in touch with the spirit? So we devised the whole experiment um, based around what she actually does on stage uh, every night. I don't know where she is today, but she'll be somewhere selling out a thousand seats, two thousand seats somewhere. We developed a test based on what she does, uh, and it was Halloween. We kind of thought, you know, spirits are active. You know, give give her a bit of a a, a wind behind her, um, and unfortunately, she declined to take the test. So. Um, I think even more disappointing than the fact that she didn't take the test, she also declined the invitation to come and discuss a different kind of test. Um, we, we will reissue that challenge. Uh, and, and I think until Sally or any of the other psychics actually show us what they can really do, then I, I think there, there'll always be a, a large element of doubt as to whether they are falling themselves and certainly falling other people.